It's all about running with Jesus and definitely Christ wants us to run with him and he wants us to be holy forever. In fact, we have to run this race in purity, in holiness, right? In order for God to be pleased. Yes, that's how we do it. And we are at part four of this series. This series has been awesome thus far, running with Jesus, right? It has been so encouraging and so sobering. And I'm sure we have been learning a lot, right? And as youths, we are just here to definitely hear from the Lord, right? The Lord is going to be speaking and at this time i just want to heal jesus lord have your way right now as we are about to dive into the word i pray for articulation lord i pray that you may just speak to the hearts of your people father you know where each and everyone that's listening are you know where they are Lord, you know how to reach them. You know how to encourage them, Father. And your word is just so sharp. Lord, it's just so powerful. Father, so I know you'll be really reaching the hearts of your people, Lord. You'll be speaking to me, Father. You'll be speaking to us all. And this word, Father, this word, may just go forth, travel all over to the different nations, Father, and just do what it sent forth to do father may it fulfill your purpose lord just have your way as this word just goes forth in jesus name in jesus name speak lord amen all right and there's a song i'm remembering from hillsong united it says i will never be the same again i could never return I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I will run the race. And I will never be the same again. And another verse, it says there are higher heights, right? There are deeper seas. Whatever you need to do, Lord, do in me. May this be a testimony. The glory of God fills my life. And I will never be the same again right so may this be a testimony as we discuss running with jesus right and let's just dive straight into it ecclesiastes 9 11 lets us know that the, the, this race the race is not for the swift right and the matthew 24 verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end right the same shall be saved right so combining those scriptures right the race is not for the swift but those who can endure to the end hallelujah and this christian life on earth right it's likened unto a race and there's only one way to run this race and it is with Jesus, right? It is with Jesus. So when I think about running, it involves urgency, right? It involves strength, definitely strength. Training is involved. And as mentioned, endurance, that's critically important. And that will come up more as we go along. And as Christians, Philippians 2 verse 12, right? It tells us the attitude we are really supposed to have. And let's read that scripture. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, that's very important, as ye have always obeyed. So Paul is writing here, to the church in Philippi, right? And he's saying, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. Notice he said always obeyed. So obedience is critical, right? Obedience is compulsory. 
and we'll get we'll say more about that as we go along not as in my presence only but now much more you hear that much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling right so we are charged to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling right and we'll soon break down what that really means and i want to touch back on obedience yes we are talking about running with jesus and we run this race by obedience right we obey every instruction that proceeds out of the mouth of god right all right and the word as in the scriptures we obey those right question as youths are we only holy and obedient in the presence of our leaders parents teachers or guardians you know that that question was inspired by what paul was saying in philippians 2 verse 12 as he have always obeyed not as in my presence only but much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling right question two can we live holy without being monitored right without being monitored that's a question for us to ponder and if our leaders faint do we are so faint that's also something i want you to think about right and just to give you a look at background paul at the time where he was writing this letter this encouragement to the church right in philippi he was going through a lot right he was going through a lot of hardships and this church always sends him offerings and so forth they are always kind to him right so he's just writing to them and encouraging them let's go further in this message all right hebrews 12 verse 1 just using it for reference it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us right so just using that for reference to say that faithfulness to god and unwavering integrity right is essential is very essential right and we see this in the story of joseph right joseph that that's a wonderful story despite joseph being sold off into slavery right he was basically betrayed by his brothers right he was imprisoned even and there was this one moment right along his journey where faithfulness and unwavering integrity really showed right he had the opportunity to enjoy some pleasures with another man's wife right that wife her name was potiphar in those days right and you know what he did you know what he did he ran he ran he just he just get out of that atmosphere he literally ran right his attitude was how can i do this wicked thing unto this loving awesome god this god that has been faithful to me i want to be also faithful to my god so i'm running out of here that that was his attitude to just run he's not going to disgrace himself nor betray god like that right and there are other examples in the bible the story of daniel and the story of job and so many others let's dive even further and i hope you have your book you're making notes because a lot of scriptures is gonna come forth we're gonna take a journey through the scriptures in fact we are taking a journey through the scriptures 
right? So just follow along, make note of these scriptures, and really let the Lord just speak to your heart as we go along. Philippians 2 verse 13 to 16. Right, laying some foundation here and we'll dive deeper as we go along. All right, verse 13 For it is God which worketh in you, not our strength, but to will and to do his good pleasure. Right, and to do verse 13. Let me just read that over Philippians 2, verse 13 to 16. For it is God which worketh in you. So it's not our own strength, right? Speaking to those who are Christians, the born again, those who have the life of Christ in them, right? Both to will and to do his good pleasure, right? So God wants to use our bodies for his purposes in you. God wants to work in you, in our bodies to do his purpose to fulfill his purposes right verse 14 says do all things without murmurings and disputings and i'll just insert this nugget thankfulness that's the attitude a runner should have if you run with jesus you gotta be thankful there's no separation right verse 15 that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation right so we are expected to be innocent right uncontaminated by this world and the right word here is purity we are expected to be pure purity is key in running this race of life with jesus running with jesus right among whom he shines as lights in the world so those who are christians those who are running with Jesus, you are lights. And that to me represents hope, right? So when we live that life, that Christian life, when we express that life that Jesus gave us, right? When we express his character, showcase his attitude, how he deals that's how we deal that's hope and persons will look at that and they will want to run like how we are running they would want to enter this race they want to give their lives to christ verse 16 holding forth the word of life so god's word is life god's word is life we must obey and present it to others of course that's a part of what i just mentioned that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain right we don't want to labor in vain and we don't want to run in vain so while we are running we are expected to be fruitful right fruitful in our lives and fruitful in terms of winning others to christ right and let's say if we see others struggling in this race we are running this race of life with jesus right so in running we are focused right but we're not so focused that we don't see our, our brother struggling right if we see our brother struggling right i'm imagining just heading over there you know that runner is about to faint that runner is very tired exhausted imagine just running over embracing that runner you know and just help him or her run a couple steps right encourage that runner i'm also imagining like taking the form of a coach right and just coaching right because jesus is in us you know and if jesus is in us jesus is the ultimate coach so of course we can encourage that runner coach them back to reality 
right? Let them know who they are. Yeah, remind them who they are, right? And in no time, that runner begin to just take off, right? Yes, and I'm also imagining persons on the sidelines representing those who are unsaved, like, and we are running with Jesus, right? And we see them. So we are like, hey, 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 come over, come over, run with us. And that's, that's like telling them Jesus loves you. Jesus died so you can be saved, right? Jesus is hope. Jesus is the way to a fulfilled life, right? So they hear what you are saying. Christ is ministering to them, right? And in no time, they accept the life of Christ in them, right? They receive the life of Christ and they too begin to run and they see others on the side sidelines and they do what you did, right? So, of course, that's how it should be. All right, so back to Paul. So Paul was a spiritual coach right that that's um a, a part of what i was trying to explain earlier right so paul was a spiritual coach he is speaking to christians in philippi right and spiritual coaches like in our lives or parents can be spiritual coaches guardians or pastors or mentors right yeah they have experience they are running with jesus and they can share some wisdom right they can help us to run our race more efficiently and not faint all right so question are you in submission right are you in submission to these spiritual coaches right because if you are not in submission to them, as in you won't heed the advice, you won't seek the guidance, right? You won't accept their teachings, then they are not going to be beneficial to you, right? And you're going to find yourself lacking, right? Because this race wasn't meant for us to run alone, right alone notice the theme says running with jesus <laughs> running with jesus right and if you know anything about jesus he he normally has a bunch of people right embracing what he believes and he's all about oneness right he's all about oneness so one mind one heart same character right so there are others involved in this race and we can seek the guidance seek the help they can coach us all right awesome awesome let's continue let's continue as youths do we solicit the wisdom from experienced runners and coaches i touched on that jesus was also a man under subjection so jesus even though he's god right he came and he subjected himself to teachings right he subjected himself to teaching he was our forerunner and apostle joshua selman he described jesus as a pattern man right so jesus is the standard right and notice i mentioned that word forerunner let's zoom in on that word what that word really means forerunner so it's an adjective signifying running forward going in advance is used as a noun also of those who were sent before to take observations acting as scouts right especially in military matters or of one sent before a king to see that the way was prepared right so that gives you a, an idea of a forerunner and let, let's add some context Isaiah 
Isaiah 40 verse 3, right? Just a fast reference. John the Baptist, right? The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So John the Baptist was sent to prepare persons, hearts to receive the Messiah. Right? Prepare the way. So do, to do some preparations. And notice this, this scripture says the voice of him that cried in the wilderness. Right? Make straight in the desert a highway. Right? So that tells me that a road, a track wasn't charted out as yet because Jesus is the way. All right. All right. Let's go further. Let's go further. So in the New Testament, it is said of Christ in Hebrews 6 verse 20 as going in advance of his followers who are to be where he is when he comes to receive them to himself. Right? And we're going further, taking a closer look at Jesus the foreigner. So Jesus the foreigner. All right. John 14 verse 6 I'm gonna start actually backtrack up to verse 1 for some context all right so Jesus was comforting his disciples and in verse 1 he says do not let your heart be troubled right do not be afraid or cowardly believe confidently in God and trust in him have faith hold on to it rely on it keep going and believe also in me right me jesus right in my father's house are many dwelling places if it were not so i would have told you because i am going there to prepare a place for you follow now verse 3 and if i go prepare a place for you i will come back again and i will take you to myself so that where i am listen so that where i am you may also be right for runner right where i am you may also be verse 4 says and to the place where i am going you know the way christ wants us to know the way right so guess what in verse 5 thomas said to him lord we do not know where you are going so how can we know the way right it's a question lord we do not know where you are going so how can we know the way listen to what jesus says in verse 6 critical verse jesus said to him i am the way i am the way the only way to god and the truth the real truth and the life the real life no one comes to the father but through me are by me right so that's the way to the father through jesus right salvation in order to be saved it's through jesus right jesus is the way we have to believe on jesus in order to be saved to enter the race right and to keep running with jesus right we have to have that in our minds jesus is the way jesus is the way the only way there's no other way all right so jesus the way the truth the life and we are diving even deeper when we think about the way let's not take it for granted what does that really mean synonyms road a track right those are synonyms for we are a path generally when a sinner have made a decision to become a christian that's a turning point turning point right turn to the way all right you have heard through being preached so that sinner right hears truth being preached right and of course that truth points the sinner to the way right to jesus jesus is the way right and truth says 
receive me receive jesus receive the life of christ right and from that point on it's all about running with jesus once we have received the life of christ it's all about running with jesus and let's continue for the unsaved in order to enter the race of life to run with jesus you must believe god's word and acts 4 verse 12 says something critical about this let's hear what acts 4 verse 12 has to say it says neither their salvation in any other colon some explanation about to take place listen what that really means salvation in any other what does that really mean there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved right so salvation is through jesus jesus is the way right and of course we'll even expound more as we go along now let's take a look at the christian if you are a christian it is also important to know that you cannot run effectively without identifying who you are all right so the mind is very important in running this race right think about a natural runner they literally have psychologists employed to talk to these runners to get them in a frame of mind to let them believe in themselves believes in their talent believe in in the hard work that they put in believe even in god that god can give them the strength they can pull through they can really win they can take the gold medal right so why not when it comes to the race of life running with jesus the mind is important why not focus on the mind right all right so let's focus on the mind a little bit my identity as a runner my identity as a runner with christ right and the question is how do you think about yourself how do i romario mitchell think about myself right because the way i think about myself as a runner right affects the way how i run right remember i told you in the natural running a race the psychology right of the runner the mentality of the runner that's very key all right so let me let, let me ask you this who are what is a christian right let's not take that for granted who are what is a christian all right and let, let's dive so a christian is a disciple or follower of the anointed one of god which is jesus christ right so a disciple or follower i want to say disciple you know are you a disciple what's a disciple a disciple is a follower of the master right a disciple is a follower of the master and i just leave it there a disciple is subjected to the teachings and training of the master in order to be like the master and that's discipleship right gonna go further let's look at this further yes by referencing acts 9 verse 1 to 6 all right so what does acts 9 verse 1 to 6 say verse 1 and saul yet breathing out and threatenings all right let me read that over and saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the lord against the disciples of the lord went on to the high priest asked of him letters to the synagogue to the synagogues at damascus that if he found any who were of this way who is the way jesus is the way of this way and if jesus is the way right and you embrace that way 
right? You go through Jesus. Then, of course, you'll have the character of Jesus. You identify with Jesus, right? You can't be distinguished differently from Jesus. You act like Jesus, right? After all, you are a disciple, right? Notice verse 1 says, Who Saul is after? Those who are disciples of the Lord, right? And those who are disciples of the Lord are of his way, of the Lord's way, of his character, right? Same attitude, same heart, same convictions. All right, so verse 2, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Verse 3, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly, wow, yeah, that's, that's a turning point, you know, and suddenly, when the scripture says, and suddenly, that's, that's not normal. There shone round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? That's a question. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Notice Saul immediately recognized Jesus as master by calling him Lord. Right? So he immediately, immediately acknowledged God as master. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 6, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? What wilt thou have me to do? A disciple. That's the heart of a disciple. Right? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be so thee told thee what thou must do so he was immediately placed into discipleship right he subjected himself he acknowledged jesus as the master and jesus the master immediately placed him into discipleship right so paul began taking instructions Jesus the Lord the Master, after acknowledging this, Paul began obeying specific instruction that will result in him having the same character as Christ. God is master, but he also has ordered his kingdom, right? So even though Paul had that encounter with Jesus, direct encounter, he was sent back to a man right first ananias the man the lord chose the man of god the lord chose to lay hands on paul for him to receive the holy spirit and of course paul after that subjected himself to the teachings of this is the disciples the disciples though those who have been with the Lord, experienced the Lord, live with the Lord, right? Know the ways of the Lord, right? They, they were apostles uh, at that time. So they taught Paul. That's why Paul could comfort with such great revelations, right? He wrote so many books. He did so many great things signs wonders because he was taught by the disciples those who have been with jesus while he was on earth and that's the effect of mentorship right so in this race in this race running with jesus you can't be a loner you need to subject yourself to some authority your pastors your teachers your evangelists right the, the fivefold gifts pastors teachers evangelists right you have apostles right 
they are responsible to really set the boundaries of the feet and to really raise you up right so apostolic grace is very important all right and we're going further we're going further so being born again begins by receiving the life of jesus our forerunner you then become something else you become a christian you become a disciple after receiving the life of jesus right so you cannot remain the same you become a disciple you become a christian right and if you are a disciple you follow the instructions that Christ gives, right? You follow his word and you run this race by obedience. All right. For, all right, all right, all right. John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him to, give, to them gave he let me read that over but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name for those of you who are unsaved right christ want to give you the greatest gift that you can receive here on earth right and that is the gift of salvation that is his life the life of jesus christ he wants to install that life in you right and let's expound on this life this life is so grand it's so amazing it's out of this world unlike any other life this life is the one that's useful to him right john 5 first john 5 verse 11 to 13 but i'll just read 11 and 12 and this is the record that god has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son hallelujah so what kind of life eternal life who is this life in his son jesus christ he that hath the son hath life so he that hath the son jesus christ living inside of them hath eternal life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life that life is not a life that can be of use to god right hallelujah 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 all right so for those of you who are unsafe i invite you to really choose the life of christ choose the life of christ right choose the life of christ and john 3 verse 16 puts it this way right for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son jesus christ that whomsoever anybody who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life right that's amazing that's amazing so believe christ died for you of course believe he loves you and believe that jesus is the only way to a fulfilled life and speaking of choice I mentioned choosing earlier that all who are unsaved, right? You must choose to submit yourself to Christ, right? Choose the life of Christ. Desire the life of Christ, right? So let's zoom in on the power of choice by looking at Matthew 5, verse 6, right? It says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled right so that speaks to desire hunger you desire right that's that's a craving you really need to be filled up right you need jesus right so you must desire jesus choose jesus right and i love 
Psalm 31, right? this is the attitude. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Right? So if you're not saved, if you're not currently running with Jesus, indeed you are in trouble. Right? If you were to die right now, right, without submitting your life to Christ, then unfortunately you'll end up in hell right that's just the word that's what the word says so i didn't say it. that's what, just the word right so i pray that the lord have mercy on you for indeed you are in trouble psalm 31 and psalm 51 verse 17 lets us know that the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise so in order to enter this race right remember i said you have to want god you have to choose christ right you have to make a conscious decision right and you have to reach this place called brokenness right where you're just weak before the lord you just really desire him right you recognize that jesus is the way Right? You recognize that he died for you. Hallelujah. You just want this life. This life of Jesus Christ that is being ministered to you all throughout this message. You just desire that. Right? Alright. And we're going further. We're going further. Galatians 5 verse 25. And this is addressing those who are Christians, our disciples right it says if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit right so we of course we must have that personal integrity that got the character that more courage going right and that first part of the scripture galatians 5 verse 25 if we live in the spirit right that that's a condition right so if we live in the spirit then this is what is expected of us we must also walk in the spirit that's the expectation. We can do it. It's possible. That's an instruction from the Lord directly. We live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Right? And that's synonymous to just being pure. Right? And when we speak of purity, we speak of just having that clean heart before the Lord. The heart is just clean, spotless, pure. Right? Purity is a choice. Purity is a choice. All right. And Hebrews 12. What does Hebrews 12 has to say about what we have been talking about? It says, we, right? All right, let me just read it. We are foreseeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses compassed about right so imagine a, a circle and these cloud of witnesses they are in all directions all around us and it was darren Callum in in his message right that mentioned that the these cloud of witnesses they are cheering us on Right? They are cheering us on. They are encouraging us. They don't want us to falter. They, won't, they don't want us to faint. They want us to continue running. Right? And they are for us. Right? So they are not cheering for us to, to falter. Right? The, all the cheers are to encourage. All right? To boost our confidence. To say, yeah, you can make it. Definitely. All right, so the scripture goes on to say, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, right? So easily beset us, right? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. This is very encouraging. We must run this race with patience that is set before us. So patience is critical. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, right? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and i must reference luke 22 verse 41 to 44 right 
saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Right? So, Christ, at one point, he was, he was praying. He sought if there were other ways to fulfill the purpose of God. Right? For us to be redeemed, set free. And this was the attitude. Right? There was no other way. And the attitude was, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And that should be our attitude as well. And in just continuing Hebrews 12, verse 2, despising the shame. So Jesus despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right, so looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God because he endured, right? He never gave up. That's his reward. And of course, he's, he, he's cheering us on. And he's encouraging us to never give up as well. Verse 5. And he have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So I want to bring in another principle here. Well, I touched on it earlier. Training. 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 Running this race with Jesus, we need training we must submit ourselves to training chastening son's training right and jesus chastens who he loves all right let's go further for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth verse 7 if he endure chastening if ye endure chastening god dealing with you God dealeth with you as with sons, right? So if you are going through and you endure the, you endure the chastening, you endure the training, God is raising you up. God is bringing you through some situations, some circumstances, right? You have to deal with some tough relationships. All of that, you are on the training ground, Right? So if you endure and keep pushing forward, you keep running despite the obstacles. Remember, it was Minister Jermaine Johnson who mentioned that this race that we're running is not a 100 meter race, you know, it's like a steeplechase race where that's likened unto a obstacle, likened unto an obstacle, obstacle course. <laughs> right? There are obstacles for you to maneuver right yes verse 8 says but if you but if ye be without chastisement wherefore all are partakers then are ye bastards and not sons right so if god doesn't really train us up and bring us through these situations and circumstances and relationships, right? For us to grow up, to be better, to be more experienced, to be able to help others, to run more efficiently, then we are not truly his sons, truly his disciples, right? Yes, we are bastards if God doesn't deal with us like that. Runners with Christ, Christians, as I said earlier, we need training. And remember that Jesus is the coach, the ultimate coach, and he's the forerunner. And we must recall that a disciple does what the master does. So keep that in mind as we go along. And Jesus submitted himself to training at a young age. Right? So how much more we? Right? We need training, a lot of training. And John 5 verse 90 to 20, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son, in other words, the runner, the disciple, the Christian, can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do. 
for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Right? Whatever the Father do, the Son also does. Right? True disciple. That Son is a true disciple. For the Father loveth the Son and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he shew him greater works than these that he may marvel. Right? Yes. Greater works that he may marvel. So we are, we are here. We are embracing the, men, the mentoring. We are embracing the training. Right? Eventually, we are expected to even take that vision further. Right? We are being mentored. Take that vision further. Paul went further. Right? He embraced all the training of those apostles, all the disciples, those who have been with Jesus, and he did so much. So, if we also embrace the mentorship, right, in our lives, we know those who are mentoring us, our pastors, guardians, and so forth, teachers. If we embrace the wisdom, we go even further. We do so great things. And it's all about honoring. It's the Hana code, right? Powerful. That's a message unto itself. So Jesus the foreigner took the form of man for us to imitate that life. Jesus is the standard. So Jesus is the standard. Jesus is the pattern man. Right? Salvation is to receive the life of Christ. Yeah? Christ Jesus. Note that it is more than being rescued from sin. Right? But to become as Jesus is. Right? We are to become as Jesus is, a true disciple. Holiness or purity is the nature and character of a runner in the race of life. Alright. And let us zoom in and first and first Peter 1 verse 15 to 16. First Peter 1 verse 15 to 16. Alright. So it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right? That's an instruction that the Lord gives. And if those who are disciples, those who are sons, Christians, if we couldn't actually live holy, then the Lord wouldn't have instructed us. And he instructed us to be holy as he's holy because that's our nature, right? And remember, a disciple is expected to be as the master. And if Jesus was holy, he walked holy, he's the forerunner, he's the pattern man, then we too are expected to be holy. Notice what verse 16 says, be holy. For I am holy. God is comparing his holiness with our holiness. And it must be the same holiness. Alright. In terms of stumbling blocks, God wants us to really zoom in on the mind again. We touched on it earlier, but let's zoom in again. How we think about ourselves and how we think about God. How we think about our situation, circumstances, relationships. How we think about all that is needed for us to run this race effectively. That matters. Right? That matters. Now, if we run. Right? Let me backtrack. Now, if we have not accepted that holiness is our nature. Right? Then... That's actually making way for sins to easily beset us, right? Making it easier. That's going off track. We must actually believe who we are. Believe in who Jesus says we are in order to run this race efficiently, right? Because the psychology of a runner is critical. God is merciful, of course, he can get us back on track, 
and it is when we are obedient that we really reap the benefits right of running with jesus when we are obedient if we are disobedient however we stop running right we stop running and of course we have to repent right so repentance comes into play anytime we stop running we have to repent because anytime we stop running there's something that entices us something distracted us and we made a decision to do some form of foolishness and we'll dive into that so changing how we think actually turn away right let me backtrack a bit we are zooming in on repentance i just want to touch on it i'm not taking it for granted true repentance right yes changing how we think it's a turning away from whatever we were doing that opposes god right and it's a resolve to do that which is righteous it is to be in sync with our nature again right so changing how we think is really effective right and we first acknowledge who we are by nature in order to do that so in order to change how we think in changing how we think we must acknowledge who we are by nature right we are repenting right we are turning away from that sin that easily beset us right that sin that we stumble over right we are getting back on track and we must get it right in how we think right so the word confirms who we are so jesus tells you who you are in his word jesus tells us who we are in his word and youths i, I must say this i must mention this critical point emotions don't tell us who we are right emotion don't tell us who we are because we are talking about how we think right wrong thinking actually creates wrong emotion wrong thinking reproduces wrong emotions right let's look at what james 1 verse 14 to 16 teaches us so james 1 verse 14 to 16 but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed right that's like being caught by a bait being enticed i'm thinking of a rat imagine a rat trap right you put a piece of cheese on it and the rat will sniff it out so he picks up the scent he sniff it out he searches he, he draws closer and closer and closer right the cheese is in view now and he gets closer and begins to bite on the cheese and the trap may not fly immediately but as the rat is about to eat that last piece the rat is trapped right so that that's the imagery that 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 came to mind so being enticed right when we are drawn away by all owners and enticed we're deceiving a ourselves like yeah we put ourselves in that position to be deceived caught by a bait yeah then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death so we can't blame the devil and say the devil made me do it right yes let us really stop blaming the devil right as youths as christians we can't blame the devil when we faint right we are running this race with jesus we can't blame the devil when we faint when we do faint when we stumble when we sin right those sin that easily beset us it's our fault it's our choice right and we must take responsibility and truly repent right so 
if you are thinking right you won't acknowledge that sin that beset you right you won't acknowledge that sin that you stumble over or you commit as your nature that's not your nature rather you should think like this i made that decision to do this foolish thing right and lord i'm coming to you i'm asking you for mercy i'm believing in who i am again i know i am this right yeah that's that's how you do it all right when i run a faints let's zoom in on that as well and then we wrap up right so when i run a faints let's zoom in on that and then wrap up there is a branch of science called psychology and it studies the mind right or the mind affects behavior and so forth and in this best-selling book it's called the power of the subconscious mind by dr joseph murphy right it is said that there are two areas of the mind i'm just setting the foundation i'm getting somewhere there are two areas two areas <laughs> of the mind the subconscious and the conscious so the conscious is responsible for reasoning day-to-day -day decision decisions the conscious mind chooses right it makes choices all right the subconscious it receives whatever the conscious mind dictates right um, he puts it this way in his book, right? The part of your mind that accepts what you impress upon it or what you consciously believe. In other words, it is like a bed of soil that accepts any kind of seed, good or bad, right? So, if I'm a Christian and I entertain loss, I watch some movie, right? I watch anime, or let's say i entertain lies and gossip right or stealing right if i entertain it if let's say someone steals and i don't see anything wrong with it because that person's told to to survive right stealing is stealing it doesn't matter from who stealing is wrong right little by little right when we compromise we may compromise in the way we think right our viewpoints or opinions when we compromise we plant seeds right and notice we use the conscious mind to make these decisions to compromise right we choose to do what we want to do nobody forces us to do anything the devil can force us to sin right what we are doing we are planting seeds in the subconscious mind right and no wonder sometimes we just come for it with some crazy character that you never thought you would do right you may say you will never steal but you compromise little by little by little by little right you're planting seeds and one day a tree is gonna grow and you're gonna steal right so when they say stuff is in the heart right stuff is in the heart and out of the heart you do some crazy things you never knew that that was in your heart yeah you might say that but you are planting seeds and as i said seeds they do grow into a tree all right hallelujah hallelujah so your subconscious mind responds to the nature of your thoughts right so you know the saying that says as a man thinketh, so is he mm. so whatever we feed whatever we feed our minds with seeds are being planted sometimes you'll be surprised at what you do i mentioned that earlier in the bible mind and heart they are they are used interchangeably a lot of the times and in other words you can corrupt your heart yeah you can corrupt your heart 
James 1 verse 14 to 16. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Right? And we're wrapping up Romans 13 verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Right? So we are instructed as Christians to make no provision for the flesh. But when we compromise little by little, as I said, let me repeat, we are planting seeds in our subconscious mind right and seeds do grow into trees do grow into big plants right and your character that will be reflected in your character right so eventually you do something really crazy or you may just decide that you don't want to run with jesus anymore right but i encourage you i encourage you just as how a disciple submits himself to the teachings, the instructions of the master, I encourage you, submit yourself to the instructions of the Lord. Submit yourself to this word. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust. Hallelujah. And I want to mention the secret to killing loss. Right? The secret to killing loss. Anything loss can be anything we desire. Right? It can be any distraction. We want something. And we'll break the laws of God to get what we want. So we want something. We'll stop running with Jesus take another track to go get that thing right and some of us think like this i'm going to take another route go get that thing and then run on back to the route in which i was running on run with jesus again but the truth is some of us don't get to actually repent right to begin to run with jesus again so you're, you're we're gambling with our souls Right? And I, I personally have been in, in this a lot of times, you know, where I, I'm, I'm reflecting even now. And it's, it's just crazy. It's just God's mercy why I'm here right now. And I don't want you to be in the same situation um, putting yourself through that. Even that song, the song I started out singing, it says, I will never be the same again. I can never return. I've closed the door. Right? So all doors to distractions, all doors to loss, all doors to anything that causes us to stop running with Jesus, they have to stay closed. I will walk the path. I'll run the race. And I will never be the same again. Right? So this message is for me. This message is for you. I will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. If I am a disciple, if you are a disciple, we'll embrace everything that the Lord is saying to us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go back to let me go back to that verse of scripture. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its loss. And I did mention the secret to killing loss is starving its appetite. Don't feed it. Right? Entertain the things of the Lord. Right? Sinners, entertain the word. When you entertain the word, right, it begins to clean you up. It begins to clean you up. Right? You begin to to even think differently even if you don't receive the life of Christ in you as yet right but the word is powerful entertain the word the word changes the mind 
right? The word influences the mind and entertain persons who have the life of Jesus in them, right? Entertain the company of the word. If I can put it that are the company of disciples. Isaiah 40 verse 29 to 31 says, He give a power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall mount up with wings. Let me read that over. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Right? When I think about weariness, I think about fatigue. I think about struggling excessively. Crazy tiredness. Right? Tumbling over. Right? And they shall walk and not faint. Right? So we don't have to be weary. There's strength in Jesus. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Remember earlier, we mentioned that running this race, we have to run with patience. Yes, patience involves waiting. Waiting upon the Lord. The Lord is very st strategic. He moves at certain times. Not our times, but according to His times. The, and His times are the best times right his ways are the best he's the way second timothy 4 verse 7 to 8 i will just end with this this is the attitude that we are supposed to have this is rather this should be our testimony I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. This was Paul after he realized that, yes, I'm going to go home to the Lord very soon. And this was his testimony. And of course, Jesus wants this to be our testimony as well. Those who are running with Jesus. And for those who are unsaved, you can enter this race, this race of life, and this can be your testimony. And in order for you to enter this race, remember what I said earlier, you have to come to a place of brokenness. You have to choose Christ. It's a conscious decision to serve Christ. And in no time, you receive the life of Christ in you and you'll begin to run. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So, Lord, thank you for those who tuned into your word, those who embraced the word. And I pray, Lord, that even those who are unsaved, they may give their lives to you father it's not hard they may make that conscious decision to just begin to serve you lord they may receive your life and enter this race and begin to run with you and lord for those of us who are already christians already disciples those who are running with you i pray we may be strengthened and I pray we may not faint, Lord. And even if we begin to get weary and fainty, that we know that there's strength in you. We pull on that strength even before we begin to falter, Lord. But if we falter, Father, I pray for mercy. I pray for mercy. I pray for your grace to raise us up. Lord, and may 
Paul's testimony be also our testimony. I've run the race, I've fought a good fight, and yeah, a crown is laid up for me. There are wonderful treasures ahead. And Lord, I just look forward to those treasures. May that be our mindset, Lord. And may we really think about who we are in just running with you. Think about who we are, Lord. Acknowledge who we are. Embrace who we are. Believe who we are. Believe who you say we are. And just run with the right mindset, Lord. So correct those mindsets that are not right. And Lord, just have your way with your people and i thank you lord for speaking to all the hearts that's viewing this broadcast whatever time it is bless you now lord in jesus name thank you again so thanks everyone for tuning in i hope you were really blessed i hope your life was changed i hope you are strengthened Run with Jesus. Run with Jesus. Run with Jesus.